Neuschwanstein Castle, Germany. This 19th century castle is a Romanesque revival architecture masterpiece. Neuschwanstein Castle, located on a hill in southwest Bavaria, Germany, was commissioned by King Ludwig II of Bavaria as his personal retreat. Completed in 1886, the castle was designed in the Romanesque revival style that became popular in the late 19th century. Three castles originally overlooked the villages of the Schwangau municipality dating back to the Middle Ages. Having lived there as a child, King Ludwig, in his desire to construct his fantasy castle, tore down the ruins of the original structures. He commissioned a new building using his own funds, which sent him into debt, and instructed the architect Eduard Riedel to design a castle based on the operas of Wagner and the stage sets of Christian Yank. With its towers and turrets that appear to have been inflated like a giant bouncy castle, and multiple levels and tessellations that invoke the Grimm Brothers fairy tales, Neuschwanstein is an iconic example of romanticism and remains a recognizable symbol of Germany. King Ludwig died in 1886, having lived in the castle for only 172 days. The castle's global fame increased drastically when it was chosen as the model for the Sleeping Beauty Castle for Disneyland which opened in 1955. Today, 1.3 million tourists visit the castle every year, making it one of the most popular attractions in Europe. Windsor Castle is a royal residence at Windsor in the English county of Berkshire. It is notable for its long association with the English and later British royal family and for its architecture. Founded by William the Conqueror in the 11th century, it has since been the home of 39 monarchs. Today, the Queen spends most of her private weekends at the castle. Windsor Castle is one of the most famous castles in the world, and it's the oldest and largest castle which can boast continuous occupation for over 900 years. Queen Elizabeth II and the royal family regard Windsor Castle as their home. Windsor Castle has a chequered history from which it moves from its construction as a wooden mott and bailey castle by William the Conqueror to a massive stone fortress. The castle, after centuries of alterations, contains about 1,000 rooms and occupies 13 acres of land. Despite countless additions and alterations, the outer walls and the central mound of the castle are still in the same position as those of the original castle built by William the Conqueror. It was a day's march from the Tower of London and intended to guard the western approaches to the capital of England. Surviving siege warfare to the age of medieval knights and chivalry and the English Civil War. In 1649, a bill in the English Parliament to demolish Windsor Castle was defeated by just one vote. Windsor Castle has been neglected and declared inhabitable and then transformed into a luxurious royal palace. The castle has survived two world wars and was then nearly destroyed by an accidental fire. Is it any wonder that people are fascinated by the magnificent Windsor Castle?
the amazing architecture of Alhambra Palace. The Red Castle Alhambra is a palace and fortress complex located in Granada, Andalusia, Spain. Designed as a military zone at the beginning, the Alhambra became the royal residence and court of Granada in the 13th century, after the establishment of the Nazareth Kingdom and the construction of the first palace by the founding King Mohammed ibn Yusuf, better known as King Alhamar. It was converted into a royal palace later by Yusuf I, Sultan of Granada. After the conclusion of the Christian Reconquista in 1492, the site became the royal court of Ferdinand and Isabella, where Christopher Columbus received royal endorsement for his famous expedition, and the palaces were partially altered in the Renaissance style. Alhambra in Granada is not one building, but a complex of medieval and Renaissance residential palaces and courtyards wrapped within a fortress. Alhambra became a city, complete with communal baths, cemeteries, places for prayer, gardens, and reservoirs of running water. It was the home for royalty, both Muslim and Christian. Alhambra's iconic architecture is categorized by stunning frescoes, decorated columns, and arches, and highly ornamented walls that poetically tell the stories of a bygone era in Iberian history. Alhambra is distinct among medieval palaces for its sophisticated planning, complex decorative programs, and its many enchanting gardens and fountains. Its intimate spaces are built at a human scale that visitors find elegant and inviting. One mile of walls and 30 towers of varying size enclose this city within a city. Access was restricted to four main gates. The Alhambra's nearly 26 acres include structures with three distinct purposes. A residence for the ruler and close family. The citadel, for the elite guard who are responsible for the safety of the complex. And an area called Medina, where court officials lived and worked. The different parts of the complex are connected by paths, gardens and gates, but each part of the complex could be blocked in the event of a threat. The exquisitely detailed structures with their highly ornate interior spaces and patios contrast with the plain walls of the fortress exterior. Although located in Western Europe, the architecture of Alhambra displays traditional Islamic details of the East, including column arcades or peristyles, fountains, reflecting pools, geometrical patterns, Arabic inscriptions, and painted tiles. A different culture brings new architecture. The decorative beauty of Alhambra seems out of place perched on a hilly terrace on the edge of Granada in southern Spain. Alhambra is now one of Spain's major tourist attractions, and many visitors come to Granada just to see the Alhambra. Perhaps this incongruity is the intrigue and attraction for the many tourists around the world who are drawn to this architecture paradise. Unraveling its mysteries can be a curious adventure. Mon San Michel Rocky cone-shaped islet in northwestern France. The islet, celebrated for its Benedictine Abbey, has small houses and shops on its lowest level. Above these stand the monastic buildings, many of which date back from the 13th century and are considered outstanding examples of Gothic architecture. The abbey church that towers over the island is built in 11th century in Romanesque style with a choir in flamboyant Gothic style. Considered as one of medieval architecture's greatest achievements, today it's one of the most highly visited monuments in France, being a part of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites list. The Wonder of the West, the Gothic-style abbey was dedicated to the Archangel St. Michael and the village that grew up in the shadow of its great walls. The Abbey is a technical and artistic tour de force, having had to adapt to the problems posed by this unique natural site. The architecture of Mont Saint-Michel Abbey is evidence of the mastery and expertise of several generations of builders. 
The construction of the abbey over a period of 1,300 years on an inhospitable site represent an undisputed technical and artistic feat. This ancient site offers a diversity of architectural styles, as its construction began in the 10th century, continuing up to the 19th century restorations. The historical, political and economic situation throughout the Middle Ages had considerable influence on the works undertaken and the methods used. Since 1979, the Mont Saint-Michel and its bay has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Today, the Abbey is among the most visited cultural sites in France. Peña Palace is a romanticist castle in the municipality of Sintra, on the Portuguese Riviera. Perched high atop a lush hill, the Peña National Palace is a popular national landmark that looks as though it was created by mashing up towers, facades and architectural flourishes from a bunch of different castles. Peña Palace is one of the finest tourist attractions in Portugal and exemplifies the 19th century romanticism style of architecture. The palace is a hedonistic mix of vividly painted terraces, decorative battlements and mythological statues, all of which stand at stark contrast to the lush greens of the Parquet de Peña Forest. The castle beautifully portrays the romantic esprit of the 19th century. Combining national decorative elements, neo-Romanesque, neo-Gothic, neo-Manueline, with the oriental styles, neo-Moorish, and Indo-Gothic, its eclectic melody of drops, towers, small turrets, terraces and others creates a harmonious whole that is unique in South Europe. Built in the 19th century by King Ferdinand II, the palace was meant to be a summer home for the Portuguese royals. Ferdinand's opulent tastes were imposed on the builders and designers, creating a schizophrenic manse that, at least from the outside, seemed to indulge any and all of the king's passing tastes. One portion would resemble a medieval European castle complete with ornate parapets, then the portion directly next to it would be modelled after an Islamic tower dome. Each section of the facade was also presented in a different colour. A long purple wing is flanked by a red clock tower and a yellow minaret and so on. It is said that Ferdinand wanted the palace to look like an opera. It is now seen as one of the grandest examples of romantic architecture. The interior of the palace was no less opulent or eclectic. Many of the rooms were designed to reflect a certain cultural influence ranging from Middle Eastern styles to the European Baroque. When the royal family fled Portugal during the Revolution of 1910, the palace and its grounds were abandoned and fell into disrepair. However, the site was restored later in the 20th century and is now classified as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Peña Palace is a national monument and constitutes one of the major expressions of 19th century romanticism in the world. It is also used for state occasions by the President of the Portuguese Republic and other government officials. The palace can now be visited by any peasant willing to make the trek and it is well worth it since visitors essentially get to experience a whole world of architecture in one stop. Unfortunately, visitors are not allowed to take pictures of the interior.